Hi everyone, welcome to another live event. I am Rachel, the online community manager for the Gypsy Nurse, and today we have the pleasure of having AMN Healthcare join us again. So last year was a year like no other for travel nurses and the healthcare industry as a whole. So today we have AMN looking back on 2021. I know it's almost over, guys. We only have about a month and a half left. And they're going to talk about um, some tips for traveling, uh, caring for yourself, which is so important, especially after this past year, uh, during the holidays and trends to keep you safe going into the new year. So joining us from AMN, we have Sandra, Jacqueline, Ashley, Natalie, and Samuel. So thank you so much for coming on. We love having you guys. We're excited to be back, Rachel. I think this is like our fourth or fifth one, and we will keep coming yeah. back as long as you all want to hear from us. We so do. We always do. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, well, we're super excited to look back 21 and really some things that we've seen um, even from 2020 and help guide our conversation on the future and those adventures that you're all looking to take in 2022. Before I kick us off, I am going to have my uh, team here introduce themselves. So Ashley, you want to tell us a little bit about you? Hey, everybody. I'm a manager of recruiting on the Allied side. Happy to be here. Um, I've been with AMN for 14 years. I love it. Welcome, Ashley. We always love having an Allied person here. Um, Sam. Hi, what's going on, everybody? My name's Sam, Director of Recruitment with Nursing. Been here for about a year. Super pumped to be here. Thanks, Sam. We're excited to have you and talk a little bit more about your background and how it'll help us with nursing, too. Natalie. Hi, everyone. I'm uh, Natalie Conyers. I have, I'm a manager of recruitment now and have been with AMN coming up on 14 years, just like Ashley. So can't wait to share with you guys today. I love it. I'm hoping that we get some of your travelers in the chat, Natalie. Um, and last but not least, Miss Jacqueline. Hi, everyone. My name is Jacqueline Brown, manager here at AMN. I've been a part of AMN in the travel nurse division for almost four years now and really happy to be here. So happy to have you all. This is such a great panel and such a great group to talk about um, our theme of looking forward to 2022 with what we've learned um, from 2021. So like Rachel mentioned, we're going to be talking a lot about self-care, you taking care of yourself. Um, we're going to highlight some first-time traveler stuff, um, which I think will be beneficial to our even very, very tenured travel nurses. Hopefully you learned something. Um, and we'll also talk um, about technology and how we're utilizing that to really look forward as to how we can provide you um, the best support and give you that 24-7 service that you're really looking for. I can't start any of these, and but for those of you who have watched our lives before, you know that I will not start any of our live presentations without first shouting out a huge thank you to all of you, um, our healthcare professionals, our clinicians, um, the past two years have been something that we could have never anticipated, um, and you all jumped right in to support your local communities, to support communities across the country, down the road. Didn't matter, you jumped in, and we are so appreciative to you. Hopefully, you hear that um, more than just when you jump onto these lives, because you are uh, fantastic, and again, we're just so, so thankful for you. So, can't start without that. Um, Kind of jumping into that same thing across the market. Um, so whether you're an AMN traveler or traveling with somebody else, um, we have seen a huge and record increase in clinicians who are raising their hand to say, you know what, I think traveling is right for me at this point. I would love to help support um, a community, again, whether that's down the road or 5,000 miles away. Um, so we've seen a huge increase in that. And that's where this focus of looking back at 2021 um, and using everything that we've learned to help us guide and direct you on that next adventure in 2022 um, came from. So I'm going to stop talking and I'm actually going to turn it over um, to one of our amazing presenters here, Jacqueline. Um, Jacqueline, let's talk about first time travelers. Um, we've got a lot of them on the stream, even if they're on their second or third assignment. I know what you're going to talk about when it comes to licensing yeah. probably affects a lot of them. So talk to us about some of those common questions. Yeah, absolutely. So First time travelers, oh my gosh, I love talking to our first time travelers. There's so much excitement in the air, but with that excitement does come a lot of unknowns. You know, for our first time travelers, a lot of them are a little bit nervous about going to a new state, a new city, a new facility, having a different nurse manager, new coworkers you've never met before. So a lot of anxiety can kind of really come around a first time travel assignment, especially a lot of questions around licensure. It's definitely one of the more common questions 
questions that we get right now. And, you know, the, the global pandemic, it really brought a lot of crisis licensure across the United States, which was totally new to both all of you and us as recruiters. And we know all states had different ways that they were really utilizing the crisis license. And although most states right now have reverted back to their normal licensure process, some states are still utilizing it. I can't even begin to tell you how many different end dates we've had or new systems in place. Um, and I know it's confusing. I get confused all the time and I'm sure you guys do as well. And you know, Sandra, there's there's really unfortunately no federal website which has in time accurate information for those clinicians. Yeah. And I'm actually gonna pause this there. We've got some shout outs to all of the RTs. So allied team. Thank you for everything that you guys do. Um, and Jacqueline, before you talk about AMN's um, kind of answer to this lack of federal website to really give our clinicians all of the information that you need, um, I jumped over our first giveaway. Um, so for those of you who have joined, you know, one of the best things about joining our lives, aside from seeing all of our faces and getting all of the great information that we provide, is our giveaways. Um, so our first um, giveaway is for the first five questions in the chat. The first five questions in the chat, they have to be a real question, not just a shout out. Um, but first five questions in the chat will um, receive an Apple AirTag and a key ring. Um, so Apple AirTag and a key ring. So first five questions in the chat, I'll be looking for those. But Jacqueline, I'll come back to you um, to talk about what Ammon's answer is to that website problem. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, as as I mentioned, there's there's no federal website where you guys can go to get accurate in time information. So instead, Ammon created one. You know, we created a website, a page for you on our website that you can go into and see all 50 states, including Washington, D.C., and click on the state that you're interested in or just want a little bit more information about and get in time accurate, up-to-date information about that licensure process and be able to have hyperlinks where you can go in and click and go right to Board of Nursing websites and even apply for a licensure. So our hope and really aren't, we know that that's going to help alleviate just some of that anxiety that can really come around, you know, a new travel assignment. We don't want you guys to, to be really worried or stressed about questions around licensure, we want to be able that we can, you know, quickly and accurately get you that information. So hopefully that helps alleviate some of that stress. I love it, Jacqueline. Thanks for uh, calling that out. And we've got yeah. from Reagan Carey. That's such a good idea. So um, good news for you as we are going to post that link in the chat. So whether you're traveling with AMN or with a different company, you can have more of that information. Um, I am going to jump us back. So I am getting a couple of questions here from Elizabeth. Um, Talking about references, um, getting multiple calls. I am actually going to come to that in just a second. Um, but while I wait for the rest of those um, questions to come in, Sam, I know that you are going to talk to us about some um, kind of tips and tricks for our first time travelers. Again, I think a lot of our tenured travelers can benefit from this, um, especially with your background coming from locums. Um, you, working with first time um, physicians there and then coming to the nursing side just really within the last year. So would love to hear what those tips are. Yeah, for sure. Thank you, Sandra. And so we know it's, as Jacqueline said, super exciting to assist our first time travelers and we look forward to continuing to help those first time travelers. And I'm gonna go ahead and share some tips because we know at the same time, although exciting, can be a little bit nerve wracking. So hopefully these tips help us out. And by the way, these tips can be found on a couple of our brand's websites. But let me cover, let me cover a couple of the bigger ones. So one, and the most basic, is talk to your recruiter. Your recruiter is going to have your assignment dates, including the start date and end date. Your recruiter is also going to have facility information and help you with any required documents needed for your first day. And then, of course, your recruiter can also provide resources on setting up housing or travel if needed. I think another big thing I'd like to mention is get to know uh, get to know your destination. A little online research prior to, an prior to the start of an assignment can help you prepare for just about anything. What does this include? This can be something as simple as weather and climate to expect over the course of your assignment. You can learn where your housing is located. You can learn a little bit more about where the healthcare facility actually is and what it's like. And then, of course, what attractions you want to explore while on assignment during your free time. Uh, closely related to that, I would say uh, choose your mode of transportation. Whether you're planning to fly or take a road trip to your new assignment, 
Either way, you can be reimbursed for some or all of your travel costs, and you can speak to your recruiter about the specific details for your assignment. It's always a good idea. I would, I've always recommended this. Bring your phone so that you have maps, directions. You can also plan restaurant and gas station stops along the way. There's a million travel apps that can make your trip smooth and worry-free. One that really sticks out to me is uh, schedule your time as far as your free time. So since since travel nursing assignments can go by quickly, just eight to 13 weeks, you'll probably want to plan ahead and make the best use of that free time. You can book ahead of time. So whatever intrigues you, whether that be tours, plays, concerts, sporting events, maximize your time while you're there. And I love that that's um, such a big call out. I think we're finally getting back to the point, Sam, where our clinicians are traveling for adventure again. Um, so we want to see all those pictures of you and you know all the fun things that you're doing while you're traveling to a brand new destination. Um, we know that working, of course, is a large part of it, but we want you to take time for yourself. So planning that free time is huge. And we do have, Jacqueline's going to talk more about it in a bit, but AMN Traveler Perks. So if you're one of our travelers, um, we offer all kinds of discounts for the things that Sam talked about, tours, um, maybe theme parks that you've always wanted to go to. If you're in California, you know, there's a lot of opportunity for you to go someplace. Um, and we offer discounts for a lot of that. So another great benefit of working with us, but making sure that you're taking the time for yourself. Mm -hmm. That's a great call out, Sandra. And continuing along with, with our tips, uh, and of course, this is before the assignment. I'll give you some specific after you arrive to your assignment location tips. So before your assignment, make a checklist. So of course, we're going to include whatever items or documents that are required by the facility to start. But also, and I think this part's very important, also include those items are gonna, that are going to make you feel most comfortable while you're away from home. If you're using housing arranged by your agency, your recruiter or housing specialist can let you know what furnishings or appliances are provided so you can make a list and add those items that you'll need. I think after we get to our assignments location, these next tips are really going to hit home. So one, do a test run. So we already mentioned as far as planning, getting to know your destination. Now, once you've actually arrived to that particular city before your first day, head on over to the hospital or clinic and become familiar with the commute, accounting for how long it'll take with traffic, getting to know available parking, and get to know a little bit more about the general layout of the facility. It's going to make your first day a whole lot smoother. You're going to arrive for your orientation on time, and you're going to make a great impression on the facility and your colleagues. Nobody wants to be worried about that traffic the first time. I know that can vary so drastically. Um, I know for us, or thankfully for me, my commute now is two minutes. But when I was in office, um, it was a lot longer. It could be 45. So especially on a first day, I would hate to be running late and add that extra anxiety. Yeah, traffic's the worst. I would, I would also say that ask a lot of questions during your orientation, regardless of your tenure as a clinician or even a traveling clinician during your orientation, which could only be one or two days. You're going to be learning a lot of policies, procedures, and meeting new coworkers. There's a lot to cover in a short amount of time. So don't hesitate to ask for clarification or more information if you need it. And then the final tip I have for you guys closely related to that is get intel from your fellow travelers at the facility. So build those connections. Most travelers won't mind answering questions about the job or the facility, and they can give you the inside scoop on the fun stuff, the local hangouts. Seek out other travelers during orientation. See if they want to explore the town with you. You may even end up with a travel partner. <laughs> we get all kinds of uh, travel partners that find themselves on assignment. So um, you never know. You might get a buddy um, while you're asking all those questions. All right, so I'm actually going to pause this there because we do have some great questions in the chat. Elizabeth, I'm going to come back to you. Um, so newly returning traveler after many years, finding it a bit uncomfortable offering uh, for references. Um, some of them get a lot of calls. Um, something that's really interesting at traveling with AMN Healthcare is we've, we've heard this. Um, this is not the first time that we're hearing this. And we have actually made adjustments to um, our referencing standards. When I say we made them, it's really us having conversations with facilities um, or our clients that we work with and saying, you know, um, getting references is pretty tricky um, and it sometimes takes a lot longer. So we need to look at whether they're really, really necessary for, um, for this clinician for taking this travel assignment. So we have changed our referencing standards to meet the demand of um, our clients right now, especially over the last two years. So a lot of changes there. Um, if you're working with AMN, you can talk to your recruiter specifically about it, um, but we, we hear you. Um, Michael, does the panel know the status of the nursing compact? California nurse here, not part of it. 
Womp womp. We, we hate that it's not a part of it because it would make our lives so much easier. Um, we probably are not the people to give you um, the answer to that. Uh, we do know that there's legislation constantly, um, especially after our kind of crazy COVID coaster that we have been on, um, where a lot of states have completely done away with um, with really any nursing requirements and just needed nurses to help. So I think that it, it has helped with that. Um, but Sam, um, Natalie, or Jacqueline, would you add anything to that from the nursing compact place? I know the two states that currently have legislation to hopefully have implementation next year. So fingers crossed is Michigan and Pennsylvania. So any registered nurses in these two states, we are very hopeful that next year we'll have some official compact go live dates. Um, but those are kind of the next two states in, um, in the process of having full implementation. I love it. Thanks for the ad, Jacqueline. Um, Catherine, what would a plus or a deal breaker in a contract be? Um, I think I'm going to pass that over to you, Natalie. So when you're working with your clinicians, and I think this is the question, Catherine, so feel free to jump in if it's not. Um, but what would a plus when a clinician is looking to travel um, or a potential deal breaker be when we're submitting them to facilities? Uh, in dealing with my clinicians, um, a plus for travelers, flexibility, 100% being open to whatever the needs of the unit and the nurse manager are is going to really help increase the chances of getting the offer or um, having it be successful because especially, you know, 2020 and 2021 has been a roller coaster and so many unexpected and what was not necessarily the norm it has now become the norm and so having that flexibility is definitely going to be a plus um deal breakers i i would say maybe not being so flexible or not being upfront in the communication during an interview process or you know when you're like sam had said talk to your recruiter work directly with your recruiter having that transparency so that way when you're being submitted or presented there isn't going to be a lot of back and forth that could potentially you know delay the process in getting an offer if someone else comes in with all the info up front so yeah, I love that, Natalie. I think those are great. That flexibility and then just the lack of flexibility would for sure be a deal breaker. And transparency, huge for us, um, huge for you as clinicians. We want to make sure that you have all the information that you need. Um, so, uh, Ashley, would you add anything to that from an ally perspective? She definitely covered all the bases. One thing I would say is if you have any time off, make sure you voice that up front before you take the contract. A lot of times it's tough to get that approved when you're actually working. Um, if they don't have um, the time to give you off and they need the coverage, it's um, better to have it approved before you actually start. Love it. Good point, Ashley. Um, and I'm actually going to stay with you, Ashley. We are still waiting for one more question. So we still have more prizes to give away. So drop those questions in the chat so we can answer them for you. That is for. Um, but Ashley, I'm going to take us back to licensing. We talked a bit about it from the nursing perspective and some of the things that the nursing side is doing, but talk to us about what the allied side of our business does um, when it comes to licensing for our clinicians. Yeah, absolutely. So the Ally team, we have some really great programs that we offer for the travelers that are on assignment, or if you're not on assignment yet, and you're looking to come work for AMN. So the first one is called a date request. So basically what that means is um, if a traveler has accepted a contract for a particular state, and you're not li yet licensed in that state, we would assist with um, getting you licensed. So you would actually work with our licensing team to obtain that license, we would just make sure that um, you have it in before you actually start the contract. Um, we do take into consideration how long the license would take so that we can ensure uh, the most accurate start date with the client and then also um, so you know when you're going to be headed out there. Um, the fees that are associated with that license we do cover so application, transcripts and so forth that is covered by AMN. Um, so a great plus with that 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 is you know taken care of for you guys. The second one um, is reimbursing for the license. So if a traveler wants a job that they're already licensed in and we place you there, then all you need to do is uh, send us proof of payment or receipts. Um, you can actually upload that right on the AMN passport to be reimbursed, which is so, so easy to do and an awesome uh, thing that we've implemented recently. Yeah, I love that. 
Um, and just kind of going back, just all of the, the passport stuff, that ease of doing business with us, um, I think that's where you're starting to see that technology um, and where we're really making that investment in technology to make your life easier. Um, nothing is worse than sending emails back and forth about reimbursements and uploading and for your email. Our iPhones and um, Androids make it significantly easier, but if we can just load it onto the app from the app, it's so simple. Yep, absolutely agree, much easier. Um, and then the third one that we offer is future licensing. So I find this one in particular to be an awesome incentive for you guys. So to qualify, you just have to be on assignment with us currently, and then we would work with the licensing team to um, get another license in hand. So you would work with your recruiter and the, and the licensing team uh, for that next license after the assignment that you're on. So the goal is, is that you get this license in hopes that you're gonna go there next or in the near future. Um, we do uh, cover costs for that as well. There are a few fees that the traveler does have to pay for ahead of time, application fee, uh, testing and license if you need to get those. Um, but there are um, other ones that we cover ahead of time, such as license verification from other states, fingerprinting, um, so on and so forth. But the ones that you guys have to pay for upfront, we do reimburse once you're working with us. So everything is covered. Yeah, which is so cool um, because you never know where, where life is going to take you and what's on that bucket list. So you can start planning so far ahead of to that, you know, that next date that you're looking to travel to. All right. We did get some additional questions in the chat. Um, so from the travel RT, what can I tell my colleagues who keep asking me if travel assignments are drying up the across the country? Um, I would tell them that they're not. <laughs> um, and there is a lot of opportunity um, in traveling right now. We're actually going to take this a little bit later, Travel RT. Um, and it's actually a section we're going to focus heavily on is just what the demand looks like right now across the country. Um, and I know this is probably coming from the Allied side, but actually just with a nod, you can probably say yes or no if it's the same as noticing. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> um, all right, so we've got our five winners for the questions. Michael Isaacs, Travel RT, Catherine Rivas, Elizabeth Bashaw, and Talia um, Hassan. We will get your um, information from Rachel so we can get those prizes out to you. Um, I do have this other question from you, Talia. So uh, with AMN, is, is initial travel to the state paid for by AMN or reimbursed to the nurse? Um, so we do reimburse your, um, your travel. That is an area typically that we negotiate with you on how much is really needed. Um, so talk to your recruiter when you're working with us, but we will reimburse you um, for travel. Cool. All right. Well, since we gave away all of those prizes, how about we give away some more? <laughs> um, so I have another giveaway. Um, five lucky winners um, will receive a $100 Visa gift card. So you can use that wherever your heart desires. Um, it is part of Amen Passport. So it's part of our Amen Passport giveaway. So um, all you have to do, ready? Grab your phones. Download the Amen Passport app. If you've already downloaded it, you're halfway there. Find a job that looks interesting to you, that you have on that bucket list of someplace you would absolutely love to travel. Take a quick screenshot of that, post it to your Instagram story, and tag AMN Nurse. So again, download the AMN Passport app, find a job, take a screenshot, post it to your Instagram story, and tag AMN Nurse. And we will have five lucky winners to receive a $100 Visa gift card. I can think of a few things that I'd like to spend $100 on. Ashley, Sam, Jacqueline, Natalie, you guys agree with me? <laughs> Natalie says absolutely. <laughs> Something for herself, for sure. <laughs> All right, so we will give you some time to do that, but download that app, um, take a screenshot of that adventure job, some place you would just love to travel to. Um, tag us on your Instagram story and we will announce those five lucky winners. All right, so coming back to Jacqueline, some of the things that we have talked about um, as we're looking at traveling for the first time or maybe continuing traveling um, or what traveling in 2022 looks like versus 2020, um, talk to us a little bit about some of those common questions um, that our clinicians give us when it comes to the newness of travel yeah. and the environment that they're gonna be in. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, we do get a lot of questions from our first time travelers about, like I mentioned earlier, some of that nervousness pertaining to a first time assignment. Like I said, a lot of times you're gonna be in a new state, a new city, a new unit. And especially if you don't have a travel partner, you're gonna be there alone. And yes, you have a recruiter and we as recruiters are there for our clinicians and 
all aspects. Um, but you really do have a partnership here at AMN with our clinical team for any of those more clinically based questions. So even if it's 2 a.m. and a Saturday evening and or Saturday morning at 2 a.m. and you, you know, you have a concern or a question that's happening on unit, we actually have a 24-7 clinical team that are there to support you. And our clinical team are registered nurses. So they're going to be able to provide you with a different level of support that I as a recruiter could be able to give you because they understand what you're going through. They understand what's happening on unit. So even if it's Saturday morning at 2 a.m. and you know maybe your recruiter is not available, we have a 24-7 hotline that is available for you and it gives you a lot of that peace of mind, you know, of knowing you're not alone. It doesn't matter what city or state you're in. There is someone always there available to be able to answer your call and and help you out and hold your hand throughout the process. Which is such a big focus for us is making sure that our clinicians are well, well taken care of. Um, and something that's really exciting that is just new this year is that in addition to that amazing 20, 24-7 clinical support, um, our customer service team has actually transitioned to 24-7 as well. We know our clinicians work all hours of the day and night. You don't work eight to five. Um, some of you may, but most of you do not work eight to five. Um, so we want to provide the service that you need at the time that you need that. 24-7 clinical support for any of those clinical questions or concerns that you have, 24-7 customer support to help you with any login issues that you're having with either AMN Passport, um, the website, maybe you have a payroll question um, or something was off on your time card that you want to discuss, they're there to help you with all of that. Um, it could be 12.30 in the morning and that's the time that you have, we want them to be available for you. Along those lines, we've really made this investment in technology and Sam's gonna to talk to us a little bit more about that in a bit, um, but to be able to provide you with self-service. So Ashley mentioned the reimbursements, being able to load that onto AMN Passport on your time and make it easy to do business with us. Um, in addition to jumping onto our website and having the um, self-service chat feature that answers any general, very basic questions that you have um, that maybe you just need a quick answer to. Um, so hopefully all of that um, is being utilized and you're loving all of it. Um, we love hearing from you and just making sure that we're providing you with what it is that you need. Um, before we jump back in, um, Eva, so if you do not finish your first contract with AMN due to a family emergency, will you receive another chance at an assignment? Um, so I'll kind of start this answer and then Sam, if you want to pick it up. Um, the short answer is yes, we know that life happens. Um, and unfortunately, there are things over the past two years that have happened and it's devastating. So Sam, would you add anything to that? I, th I think you're spot on. We're all people. Things do happen. And uh, I would say the short answer is yes. And the specifics about what that next potential assignment could look like, I would partner with your recruiter. I would partner with your recruiter. But in summary, I think you covered it, Sandra. Awesome. Thanks, Sam. Um, so feel free to reach out, Eva. <laughs> um, kind of talking about all the self-service and you all working so hard, family emergencies is kind of a perfect transition to it, but things that are, are happening. Um, and we know that for so many of you, um, you are selfless in your ability to help others and putting others before you. Um, and us at AMN, we at AMN, um, look at that and try to see how can we support you. The nurse burnout is real. The allied burnout is real. Clinician burnout in general. So how can we be the people to support and help you um, with whatever life might be throwing at you? Natalie, I know you're really passionate about this. So I'd love to have you talk a little bit more about some of the programs we offer. Of course. Yes. All of this really does tie in with everything that we've all said as far as the burnout and the first time anxiety and travel and everything. Um, one of the biggest things that we've done for our clinicians, for all of you, is um, the EAP um, program that we have. It was five sessions a year. This year, we've upped it to eight. And that is such a benefit to have access to. Um, one thing that a lot might not know is that it doesn't just cover that counseling piece, but you, you know, the holistic 
you, it, it involves your family and that could be your, you know, human kids as well as your fur babies. There's pet care and child care. Um, there's financial planning, you know, that one of the the scary parts of traveling is giving up that, oh, am I going to have a 401k? Yes, you are. We have that here. And you can use the EAP to get that financial advice and figure out how to navigate, you know, going from permanent to travel. Um, I, I think I'll jump in here too, Natalie. Mm-hmm. Um, the financial planning piece I have to call out because I can bet that every single one of you on this call or listening to it later have been told by your recruiter, I am not a CPA. I cannot give you tax advice, um, but you need tax advice because all of the companies that you work with pay so differently from one another, understand gross and take home and what do I actually make? And all of that is so tricky. So Natalie, I think the financial planning or maybe having some talk to about that is super important too. It is very important. So knowing that's out there. Um, and then one of the, the fun parts or that has really helped with the, the clinicians this year is the care packages that AMN has um, been setting up and giving out. And, you know, over you know, earlier in the year, um, you know, nurses, you guys, or healthcare professionals, everybody, you, you do such an amazing job working your 36 to 60 hours or more per week, which is crazy that you forget that you need time to take care of yourself as well. And so having these care packages sent out, you know, earlier in the year, it was um, AMN jackets that we sent out to so many people, you know, on contract and that keeps you warm while you're charting at the nurse's station or during shift change or whatever that is. And then there's been like spa packages and coffee giveaways because, you know, going in on a night shift, you're going to need that caffeine to get through the night. Um, So it's really important to remember to take care of you so you can take care of your patients and their family members. Um, Another fun thing that Sam had mentioned, it was, you know, plan your trips, driving, knowing where you're going. Well, we probably don't have a whole lot of time to read those books or catch up on podcasts and things. So part of the EAP, you know, there's free eBooks that you can download or listen to while you're in your car and, you know, catch up on just interesting facts and stories that you may miss out on. Yeah, I think that's my one thing that I do miss about traffic is having all those audiobooks and podcasts to listen to, but it's great that we provide them to our clinicians. Um, and I know the other thing that you're going to talk to us a little bit about too, Natalie, is just part of that planning ahead, as Sam talked about, um, but planning ahead, especially at this time of year when we have Thanksgiving in unbelievably two weeks um, and all of our holiday, um, you know, our holiday end of year holidays are coming up. So what does that look like for travelers? So planning ahead is big, right? We want to make sure, especially now, everybody's been working so many extra hours. So getting that holiday time off to spend with family, loved ones, or just maybe sleep a couple days in a row. Um, Now is the time to do it. You want to partner with your recruiter, or if you're looking at an extension with that nurse manager or the scheduler, so you can get you know, that time off that's important to you to refresh and recharge your batteries, get it in early. The sooner, you know, now January start dates are not unrealistic. I know you said Thanksgiving's in two weeks. It's crazy, right? We've made it through a whole nother year almost. But talking about that time and what that schedule and planning looks like now gives you a little more peace when you are taking that time off or have that transition from one contract to the next. You don't have to worry about recruiters calling or credentialing calling and like, hey, we got to get this in. And it's truly that, you know, vacation for you. Less stress, which I think all of you need. (laughs) So just planning ahead and taking that time. Absolutely. Um, Awesome. Well, I have some more questions that are coming through in the chat. Um, Eva, I see that you've been trying to reach out to your recruiter. Don't have a ton of FEMA positions right now. So that could have something to do with it. I will definitely make sure that you get connected with today. Um, And then Talia, we do staff case managers. Um, We don't have, like I said, kind of a lot with the FEMA assignments at this time. Um, If they are coming up, we'll definitely have a recruiter reach out to you. Um, Those are kind of fewer and far between at this point, but um, we do have some case manager positions um, and we can definitely have your recruiter reach out to you as well. 
Um, so transitioning us, we do have another giveaway. So don't forget, we've still got our Visa gift card giveaway happening. Um, this one will be a raffle. Um, so if you're not the first one to do it, don't worry. Um, you could still win. We are doing part of what Natalie was talking about, taking care of yourself. Um, we have a $100 glass pass gift card that we're going to give you. Um, and that's not all. We do also have um, some noise canceling Bose headset or noise canceling Bose headset to go with that $100 class pass gift card. So shutting out the world, um, doing your yoga, whatever you might need, uh, we wanna be able to provide that to you. So all you have to do in order to win this prize is tag AMN nurse for a chance to win. So grab that phone. All you can take a picture of us. I'm going to have the group smile in just a second and post it on your story. Tag AMN nurse um, or take a picture of something that's around you while you're watching this live stream um, where you are right now. Maybe something that you're excited for about your next adventure, but I'm going to make the team smile. So everybody smile. Hopefully you all got that and posted it to your story. Remember tag AMN nurse. It will be a raffle and we will announce the winner uh, later today. So if you're watching this live stream, after it's already completed, you could still win. So make sure to tag, we'll enter you into the raffle and we'll announce those winners later today. All right, moving on. Um, so we got some questions from all of you about some of the topics that you wanna discuss, maybe questions that you had, and feel free to keep throwing those questions into the chat. Um, we are happy to answer them. That's what we're here for. We've still got quite a bit of time left. Um, but one of the things that we wanted to talk about is how we've looked at 2021, 2020, all of the changes that are happening. It feels like things change constantly for us, which means they're constantly changing for you. Um, we're hearing about vaccination statuses. We're hearing about the nursing shortage, which is really not new to us, but we are hearing about it in different ways now. Um, and I wanted us to talk a little bit more about this and what we're doing in order to support you. So Sam, I'll kick it over to you um, to talk about our, our internal changes on how we're supporting our clients when they're asking for um, vaccinations. And we're staying really, really neutral with any of that. Um, but how are we supporting our clinicians? Yeah, so I would the first thing I would say is to really reinforce what you said. Uh, AMN is going to support you in whatever personal decision you have to make in regard to the vax. What I will also say is that as soon as states or facilities are sending out their mandates, as soon as we get them, you guys are getting them. You all are getting them. So we're being timely with that. So you're getting that information real time as soon as we get it. The second thing I would say is that if you're already working with a recruiter or your future recruiter, they're gonna be able to align you with a potential assignment that aligns with that personal choice. Whether you choose to get vaxxed, whether you choose not to, your recruiter has the tools to point you to those opportunities that match whatever that preference may be. I love it. Um, and talk to us a little bit more. I know Jacqueline's gonna jump into it too, but we have really been living in this nursing shortage environment for gosh, 10 years or more, um, but AMN has made some really big investments when it comes to technology. Mm -hmm. So my first thought on that is the shortage has been going on for quite a while now, and we don't see that going away. And so what are we doing on the back end to, to make everything, everything easier for our clinicians? So because we're investing in technology, one of the, one of the big things that we've invested in over the last few years and uh, heavily over the last month is our AMN passport. Amen passport app. So how would this be a benefit to uh, our clinicians? Well, one, you can look up orders. You can chat with your recruiter. You can express interest on those orders. But additionally, the self-service chat there to answer the basic questions. In addition to that, you can find key points of contact. If you're already working with us, you can find who your recruiter is, your customer account manager is, your credentialing analyst. And, and that's all available at your fingertips. And I know we're still continually investing in that. So there should be there should be great updates in the future as well. I love it. Thanks, Sam. And you're absolutely right. We're continuing to look at it. We're continuing to develop it. And hopefully what you're hearing from what Sam is saying is that we listen to you on what's important. Um, so the app has been really built by our clinicians and what they're looking to be able to do from an app. Um, so keep sending your suggestions to us. Let us know how we can continue to help you. The ease of doing business is such a focus. We really wanna make sure that it's easy for you, um, that you're getting the care that you need when you need it. You're getting your questions answered when you need them answered. 
Um, Jacqueline, you were going to talk to us just a little bit more about <laughs> kind of going back to um, RT Traveler's question. What do I tell people when they ask if things are drying up? Um, talk to us about just nursing in high demand, and then Ashley, I'll come to you too from Allied. Yeah, RT Traveler, the answer is the demand is here. It is more demand than ever. The market is definitely not drying up. Um, I'm constantly surprised that new hospitals were staffing amount of positions coming in. And with that high demand just comes more high opportunity for you. And here at Amen, we really want to make it easy for you guys to get that information, be able to do business with us, right? And navigate our jobs. And like Sam mentioned, get that information in real time. So we've implemented a few new technology systems like our app, but features in our app, like our job board, which is amazing. If you haven't checked out our job board yet, definitely do so in the AMM Passport app. You can just peruse the market, see what's out there, get information about those positions, pay all details that the hospitals have been able to you know, provide. We send that information out to you guys guys in our job board, as well as our job board on our website at, you know, all of our, our different brands. We all have our own websites with our job board to make it really easy to navigate so you can see what positions are out there and what positions you qualify for. That's really important as well. See what type of travel assignment can I obtain based upon my experience. Um, some also really great features you can do is set preferences to be able to get job matches. And we're really excited about some new updates to come in 2022 about job preferences and matches. So that way you can always see what your options are going to be. I love it. And such a good ad, Jacqueline. Um, before I jump over to you, Ashley, to talk from the allied side, it looks like we did um, get some more ads. So I'm just going to recap. We still have not completed our earlier giveaways. Um, so first one is that AMN Passport giveaway. So all you have to do is download the AMN Passport app, take a screenshot of your favorite job, post it to your Instagram story and tag AMN nurse. Um, we will give $100 Visa gift cards away. So five people for that. Um, and then the next one is to tag AMN nurse in your story um, for a chance to win a $100 class pass with the noise canceling Bose um, headset. So one winner for that, that'll be a raffle and you can tag whatever you, or take a picture of whatever you want and tag AMN nurse. Um, but I'm looking for some winners for that. All right. My transition then back to Ashley. It doesn't look like we've got any additional questions, but Ashley, talk to us about it from an allied perspective. That yeah. high, demand, high opportunity, a thing there too. Yeah, absolutely. And I completely agree with everything that Jacqueline said as far as the shortage. God, we are seeing more positions than ever on the allied side. Um, and you know, one thing that I'm noticing too, just day to day looking at positions and people calling in for positions um, and for contracts, we see a lot of people retiring um, for perm jobs each year. So facilities are really calling us and counting on us to um, navigate and be able to find more clinicians to help supplement their staff to keep hospitals in business. Um, the market is so lucrative right now. Um, we're even seeing people that have retired from perm jobs uh, call. I get calls all the time. Um, hey, I retired, but you know what? I'm looking for a three month contract. So it really gives that flexibility too that you can come and do a three month contract and then maybe, you know, take time off and then come back in another six months and do another contract. So it's really great because you have that flexibility to come and go as you please and do a contract, take time off and come back. Yeah, I love that. And we are seeing that more and more. Um, Michael, I think there's some good questions um, on this note. I have a question that may ruffle some feathers. So I think you're good. Um, but how much do you think that the explosion of COVID contracts and many staff nurses leaving for higher paying travel contracts has now created a cycle of short staffing requiring more travel nurses? It's an interesting thought. Um, is the current environment to a world where all nurses are contract nurses just to make sure that hospitals are staffed? Um, so I, I think I'll kind of start this off and then I'll transition it over to um, probably to Sam because you can hit on this just a little bit more. Um, there's definitely been an increase across the market. We have seen it. Um, there's staff nurses that are leaving, but I, I think that we're seeing a lot of clinicians who are, um, at least in my conversations, maybe Jacqueline and Natalie, you can add here too, um, clinicians that are feeling compelled, not just because of the compensation, but are feeling compelled to travel to locations where they're really, really 
Um, and I think we saw that at the start of COVID where clinicians really felt like I became a nurse to be able to help people. Um, and the place that needs me the most right now is a COVID hotspot. Um, and I'm going to go in there. And I think that's what was so remarkable about the last two years for us. Natalie, I know you actually had a clinician that we just celebrated um, that was a New York City um, clinician during the hot spot of COVID there. Do you want to talk just a little bit about that? Um, yeah, actually, ironically enough, he's still there now. He took a, a little bit of a break to go home, visit his family, but um, still working in in the thick of it. It doesn't seem like, and it's not even just with the COVID being what ha is driving his desire to stay or even the, the need for him because it's just the new norm. So I feel like there's still the hot spots and whatnot, but every most travelers now that have been in it from the start of the pandemic till now, it's just continuing to to do what they need to do wherever that is. You know, a lot of them have stepped up and now it's um, I've seen an increase in the amount of hours that they're willing to work, not just to go and travel, you know, to to be there. So they're they're continuing to travel, but they're increasing increasing the hours that they're they're dedicating themselves to during the travel contract. Yeah, so I'm, I think we're kind of hoping, Michael, that eventually, and for all of you, we're hoping that we'll get back to a world where 36 hours is more the norm, um, because we are seeing those elevated contracts, but it's usually 48 um, to 60 hours, which is just so much to work. Um, we're hoping, and there's a lot of things um, that AMN is doing to really help with this new wave of nurses that are coming in. Um, I think there's a lot of people who are wanting to become nurses, and we saw a lot of that, particularly out of COVID, who are feeling compelled to help, um, but you know all of the things that go along with that. So um, we're really looking to how we can be a part of the solution, and Ashley hit on it a little bit. I think as you kind of start asking these questions, um, our clients, our facilities are asking these questions too, and they're coming to companies like AMN or AMN specifically um, and saying, how can you help us with this? How can you help us with the workforce planning? Um, so that's really where AMN looks at itself and where we talk about ourselves as a total talent solutions company um, is we want to be able to provide the support to our clients that um, they need in all aspects. And this particular thing is, is definitely top of mind, um, is what does the workforce look like and how can we plan for it? So I know it doesn't answer um, your question specifically, Michael, but hopefully gives you a little bit of an idea. Sam or Jacqueline, anything that you would add to that? Go for it, Sam. Okay, uh, so I would add that because we had mentioned the shortage, uh, travel clinicians are gonna be around for a long time, a long time. And as we've mentioned in nursing right now, I would say we've had the greatest number of openings we've had in a very long time, if not the highest. So I don't I don't think that piece is going away. And then also to kind of reinforce what you were saying, Sandra, it's not solely about the pay. It's about helping out those communities that are in need. Our clinicians make those choices or it could be something as simple as, hey, they want to try out a new area, which kind of what we talked about before. Maybe not a first time traveler, but maybe a first time traveler to said state or city. Yeah, I love that, Sam. Um, and we're, as recruiters, we're starting to get back to this world that we really enjoy too. Of clinicians are looking for adventure um, in their travel plans and looking to go to some of those bucket places, to eat, which just makes it so much more fun to travel um, and to plan those other things. So, um, Talia asked, do you have telecommute? I'm retired too. Um, we don't currently have really any telecommute positions. On the Allied side, I know um, it's definitely a little bit different. Ashley, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so currently we have some uh, tele positions. Right now we're just uh, staffing for um, speech pathologists, school psychology, some OTs and PTs. Um, and that's something that's up and coming uh, 2021 this year and then growing even more in 2022. Um, but right now that's what our sole focus is. And hopefully we'll get into more of these modalities that can work from home and can do the teletherapy. But right now those are um, our focuses as far as the modalities go. And it's definitely the way the world is transitioning to. Um, so we know that telemedicine is definitely a huge part of medicine and will continue to be that way. Um, so more to come. Uh, that's the answer for right now, but that doesn't mean that's what the answer is going to be a year from now. It could be very, very different as we know things change constantly. So um, we'll keep you in the loop, Talia. 
Um, and then Travel RT asked, um, thank you. I'm glad this is great info for you, first off. And yes, the recording will be made available um, later so you can watch all of our faces and listen to us again and again as many times as you want to. I know that's what you're asking, um, but we are definitely um, going to post this as well. Um, I think just in kind of wrapping up, I have one final giveaway. So if you're watching the video now or you're watching it later today um, or even first thing tomorrow, you can still be entered in this giveaway. It's our last one. Um, I'm super excited about it. Um, but all you have to do is follow our new Instagram page, which is at AMN Healthcare. And um, like one of our photos so you can like the i believe the uh, team will post today um on our live that we have but you can lie um like the most recent post whatever that's going to be um and follow amn healthcare you'll be entered into a raffle to win an apple watch an apple watch strap a stethoscope as well as a planner. And we will announce that winner um, tomorrow. I'll get confirmation from my marketing team on where we're going to post that, but it will likely be on our social media pages. So if you're not following, make sure you're following so that you know if you won. Um, but all you have to do is just like AMN Healthcare um, or follow AMN Healthcare and like our most recent um, post. And we will get you entered for a chance to win the Apple Watch, Strap, Stethoscope, and Planner. We are almost at the end of our time, which is crazy. I feel like this hour always goes by so quickly. Um, hopefully all of this information has been helpful. Um, I do I do see an email or a message from Michael here. Is Ammon hiring more recruiters or managers? Maybe I could be the next one of you on these panels. Absolutely, we're always hiring Michael, so feel free to reach out. Um, <laughs> we're more than happy to talk to you. We are hiring, um, hiring all the time, it seems, um, but we love it. Um, Katya, you are welcome for all the information. We love coming and joining you. I think just in wrapping us up, um, would love to hear from the panel on just what you're most excited about for 2022. So Ashley, I'll start with you. What are you most looking forward to? You know, doing this for as many years as I've been doing it, it never goes away, the feeling of just getting my travelers their dream position. So I'm so happy that the market is just continuing to grow. 2021 was super busy and 2022 is going to be even busier with more opportunities. Um, so that really drives me day in and day out to find my travelers their dream position and a location that you guys always have wanted to go to. Um, so I'm really excited to see the opportunities that are ahead of us. I love it. Natalie, what about you? I have to agree with Ashley. Like I, for as long as I've been recruiting and working here, I sometimes feel I get more excited about a first time travel offer than my clinician gets where I'm like, oh my gosh, we got it. And the fact that it is transitioning more into traveling for the fun that's exciting and gives me hope that we're now finally getting past the pandemic where people can go and enjoy work and enjoy the, where they're going. So I love it. And you're so right. Those are the conversations we love having with our clinicians about tell me the exciting things that you've seen that you're going to go do. Why is this the state that we want to travel to? So um, definitely a theme for us. And it's exciting to see it with our um, nurses and um, allied professionals as well. Jacqueline, what about you? Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. I'm just so excited for all of 2022 and what it's going to bring for our healthcare professionals, specifically around maybe some additional giveaways or goodies that you guys would potentially have coming your way, some more contests. There is no greater joy than calling a clinician to say, hi, you have a package in the mail. You're welcome. And seeing those pictures, I can't wait to see um, what we have on AM and Nurse and having you guys tag us in all of your adventures. Um, really, again, that bring you back to that holistic care for you all. Um, um, that's really what I'm most excited for. We love taking care of our clinicians <laughs> in the best way possible. Um, so yes, yeah, super fun and excited to see what our team does there too. Um, and then last but not least, Sam, what are you looking forward to in 2022? I think I'm looking forward because our clinicians, there's so many opportunities available right now. We talked about it probably not slowing down anytime soon. So whether we have tenured travelers or a first time traveler, if you were thinking about doing it, now's the time. There's a plethora of options. Go to that new state, get to that new city, have some fun with it. 
I love it, Sam. Yes. Um, so we are excited to get back to the fun. We're excited to get back to the adventure. Um, it looks like we've got all the questions in uh, the chat answered. So I'll go ahead and wrap us up. Um, first of all, thank you to all of my wonderful fellow panels here. And just like I can't start one of these things without thanking all of you, our clinicians, definitely can't end one without thanking our amazing partners at the Gypsy Nurse. Um, thank you for having us on, for letting us come back time and time again Thanks. to talk to all of you. Um, but we so appreciate your partnership and um, thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Gypsy Nurse. Thank you. And we appreciate you guys coming on. You guys are so much fun and we just love having you guys on here. So much great information always, um, you know, always being an advocate for the nurses and just if I was a nurse, I'd want to work for, for you. <laughs> and we would take in a heartbeat, Rachel. <laughs> I'm not biased or anything. No, <laughs> I love all of our um, sponsors and everything, but Thank you guys so much for coming on and we will see you guys all soon. Very, very soon. I'm sure. So thank you all. Bye. Bye. Thanks.